In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the theoretical yield and the percent yield. So here's a question that we can start with. 45.2 grams of iron metal reacts with excess oxygen gas to produce 58.1 grams of iron oxide, Fe3O4. What is the theoretical yield of Fe3O4? Well, to begin, we need to write a balanced chemical equation. Iron metal is Fe, oxygen is O2, and this is going to produce Fe3O4. Now there are three Fe atoms on the right side, so we need to put a three in front of Fe. There's four oxygen atoms on the right, so we need to put a two in front of O2. And now everything is balanced. Now how can we find the theoretical yield of Fe3O4? What you need to know is that the theoretical yield always applies to the product. It could be the moles of the product or the grams of the product. And once you find the theoretical yield, you can use it to calculate the percent yield. Now everything is in grams, so we're going to get the theoretical yield in grams as well. So we got to find out what is the maximum amount of Fe3 or 4 that can be produced in this reaction. That is the theoretical yield. So what we need to do is to convert the grams of Fe, that's the limiting reactant, we need to convert that to the grams of Fe3O4. O2 is the excess reactant. So now in order to convert the grams of one substance into the grams of another substance, it's a three-step process. We're going to start with the grams of Fe and we're going to convert it to the moles of Fe using the molar mass. In the second step, we're going to use the molar ratio to convert from moles of Fe to moles of Fe304. So basically, in the first step, we're changing the unit grams to moles. In the second step, we're changing the substance from Fe to Fe304. And in the last step, we're going to convert to grams of Fe304 using the molar mass again. So let's start with what we're given, which is 45.2 grams of Fe. Now the molar mass of Fe is 55.85 grams per mole. So the unit grams of Fe will cancel. And now let's change the substance from Fe to Fe304. So it's a 3 to 1 ratio. So for every three moles of iron metal that reacts, one mole of Fe3O4 will be produced. So now let's convert this back to grams. So we need to find the molar mass of Fe3O4. So there's three Fe atoms and four oxygen atoms. So it's going to be three times 55.85 plus four times 16. So that's about 231.55 grams per mole. So one mole of iron oxide has a mass of 231.55 grams. Always make sure that every other unit cancels, except for the unit that you want which is grams of Fe304. So now let's perform the operation. It's going to be 45.2 divided by 55.85 divided by 3 times 231.55. So this is the theoretical yield, 62.5 grams. So that is the maximum amount of iron metal, I mean not iron metal, but iron oxide that can be formed in this reaction. You can't get any more than this. So that's the answer to part A. That's the theoretical yield of Fe304. Now let's move on to our next step. How can we find the percent yield of this reaction? The percent yield is equal to the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield times 100%. 
So we have the theoretical yield, and we know it's 62.5. But what is the actual yield? The actual yield is the grams or the moles of the product given to us in the reaction or in the problem. We were given that 58.1 grams of Fe304 was actually produced in this reaction. So that is the actual yield. The actual yield should be less than the theoretical yield. It should never be more. And it should correspond to the same substance, Fe304. So let's divide 58.1 by 62.5. And then multiply that result by 100. So the percent yield is 92.96, which we could say it's roughly about 93%. So that's the percent yield of this problem. So this particular situation is 93% efficient. Now let's move on to part C. Okay, I didn't want everything to be deleted. Now keep in mind the theoretical yield is still 62.5 grams. We're going to need that value. Part C, what would be the actual yield of Fe304 if this reaction was 75% efficient? If the process was 100% efficient, the actual yield would be the same as the theoretical yield. So the theoretical yield is 62.5. If it was 100% efficient, that's how much product we would get in the reaction. And this is supposed to be Fe304. I don't know why I keep writing it as Fe. So if it's 75% efficient, that means in the course of the reaction, we should get 75% of the theoretical yield. So all we got to do is multiply 62.5 by 75%. The decimal equivalent of that is 0.75. So if it was 75% efficient, the actual yield will be 46.9 grams of iron oxide. Now granted, you can use the equation to get the answer as well. You could say percent yield is equal to the actual yield divided by the theoretical times 100. So the percent yield is 75%. You're looking for the actual yield. The theoretical yield is 62.5 times 100. So first, you would have to divide both sides by 100. So 75% divided by 100 would give you 0.75. And then you would have to cross multiply. 1 times A is A, and that's equal to 0.75 times 62.5, which is 46.9. So all you need to do is just multiply the theoretical yield by the decimal equivalent of the percentage, and that's going to give you the actual yield. Go ahead and try this one. It's a similar problem to the last example. 50 grams of vanadium is mixed with 50 grams of ozone to produce 65 grams of vanadium-5 oxide. What is the theoretical yield of this reaction? So let's write a balanced equation. Vanadium is V, ozone is O3, and we need to find the chemical formula of vanadium-5 oxide. So the Roman numeral 5 tells us the charge on vanadium. It's positive 5. Oxygen has a negative 2 charge as an ion. So this is going to be V2O5. So now we need to balance the equation. In order to balance the number of oxygen atoms, find the least common multiple between 3 and 5. 3 times 5 is 15. So we need 15 oxygen atoms on both sides. So let's put a 5 in front of O3 and a 3 in front of V2O5. Now we have 6 vanadium atoms on the left, so we need to put a 6 in front of V. Now, this problem is a little bit different than the last one. In the last example, we were given the grams of just one reactant. We knew which reactant was limited and which one was excess. In this example, we don't know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert the grams of each reactant to the grams of product, which is vanadium 5 oxide. The limited reactant will give us a lower theoretical yield. Whichever number is less, that's going to be the actual theoretical yield, and the reactant that gave us that answer is the limiting reactant.
So let's start with 50 grams of vanadium. Let's convert it to moles. The molar mass of vanadium is 50.95, I mean, excuse me, 50.94 grams per mole. So one mole of vanadium is equivalent to 50.94 grams. Now we need to convert from moles of vanadium to moles of the product, vanadium 5 oxide. The molar ratio is 6 to 3. So for every 6 moles of vanadium that reacts, 3 moles of vanadium oxide will be produced. So we could cancel the unit grams of vanadium and moles of vanadium. Now we need to find the molar mass of vanadium 5 oxide. So there are two vanadium atoms in that compound and five oxygen atoms. So this is going to be 2 times 50.94 plus 5 times 16. 5 times 16 is 80. And 2 times 50.94, that's 101.88. So the molar mass is 181.88. So one mole of V2O5 has a mass of 181.88 grams. So now let's do the work. It's going to be 50 divided by 50.94 times 3 divided by 6 and then times 181.88. So we're going to get 89 0.26 grams of V2O5. Now you need to understand what this number means. It may or may not be the theoretical yield. We don't know yet. All we know is that if all of the 50 grams of vanadium reacts, if it's the limiting reactant, then 89.26 grams of V2O5 will be produced. But we don't know if V is the limiting reactant yet but we're about to find out soon. Now let's start with the other substance, 50 grams of ozone. And let's convert it to moles. The molar mass of O3 is 16 times 3, which is 48. So one mole of O3 has a mass of 48 grams. Now let's convert from O3 to V2O5. For every three moles of V2O5 that's produced, five moles of O3 will react. Now the last part is going to be the same. The molar mass of V2O5 is 181.88 grams. So as you can see, whenever you're doing a gram-to-gram -gram conversion, the setup is still the same. So this is going to be 50 divided by 48 times 3 divided by 5 times 181.88. So if all 50 grams of ozone reacts, 113.675 grams of vanadium oxide will be produced. So therefore, looking at these two numbers, which one is the correct theoretical yield? The correct one is the lower number. It's this one. And the reactant that gave us that answer is the limiting reactant. So vanadium is the limiting reactant. Ozone is the excess reactant. So the answer to part A is 89.26 grams. That is the theoretical yield. Now let's move on to the next part. What is the percent yield? The percent yield is equal to the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield times 100%. In our example, the actual yield is 65 grams of vanadium 5 oxide. That's how much was formed in this reaction. The theoretical yield this is the most that we can produce in a reaction if we have a process that's 100% efficient. 
So the maximum vanadium oxide that we can produce is 89.26 grams. But we, we only got 65 in this experiment. So 65 divided by 89.26 times 100%. That means that this process was 72.8% efficient. So we only got 72.8% of how much we could have gotten in terms of the amount of vanadium oxide that was collected. Part C, how much vanadium oxide would be produced if this process was 90% efficient? So we're looking for the actual yield. The actual yield is basically going to be the theoretical yield times the percentage. So it's 89.26 times 90%, which is 0 0.90 as a decimal. So we just got to find out what 90% of 89.26 is. And it's 80.334. So if the process was 90% efficient, this is how many grams of vanadium oxide or vanadium 5 oxide that we would collect in this particular reaction. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of how to calculate the theoretical yield, percent yield, and even the actual yield if you're given the percent yield. So if a question says the process is 90% efficient, basically they're saying the percent yield is 90%. And what's the actual yield? So that's it for this problem. Thanks for watching, and have a good day.